Google Meet tutorial, how to use Google Meet. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can use Google Meet for all of your meeting needs. So let's get started. Now, if you're someone that is looking to find a easy to use tool for their online meetings, whether it's video conferencing, appointments, or events, you can easily use Google Meet. Now to access your Google Meet, simply head on over to Google. And if you click on the top right over here, you're going to have all of your Google applications. And then you're just gonna click on Meet over here. Once you do that, you're going to see settings on your top right. Now in your settings tab, you can allow permissions for your microphone and camera. So I wanna use my microphone and I want to allow this time and I want to allow it to be able to access my microphone. Then I can also test my speakers. I can see the microphone that it is using. I can also go into camera settings and give it permissions to access my camera. Then below that, you can also enable desktop notifications. So if you're someone that is frequently going to be using Google Meetings, then enabling notifications can help you in answering calls immediately and you're able to take meeting actions immediately. Now, once we've set up our basics, we can proceed with meetings. Now in Google Meet, you have two types of meetings. You either have meetings or calls. So meetings or calls are different usually for calls, you can add your phone number and you can actually contact any person that is present within your contact list. You can contact them via Google and you can just click on start a call over here to start your call. Additionally, you can also create a group link. So if you click on create group link over here, you're able to add people to one particular group and start a call with multiple people. However, first, let's go into more details about meetings. Now, if we go into meeting, we have two options. Either we can enter a code to join a meeting or we can click on new meeting. Whenever you're creating a meeting, you have three options. Either you can create a meeting for later. So if you want to schedule a meeting, you can schedule that for later. So you can also do this directly in your Google Calendar or you can start an instant meeting. An instant meeting means that the meeting would be started right away. So once you click on start instant meeting like so, you guys can see this is my instant meeting. And on the right, I will have the ability to add other people to this meeting, or I can share this link. And whenever I share this link, if people click on the link, they would be added. Now in this meeting, I have my audio, my video, then I also can turn on subtitles. I can send out reactions. You can also click on present now and you can present your window or your entire screen depending on what you want to present. Usually in Google meetings, it's a really simple and easy way for you to do your team meeting. So if someone has to do a presentation, they can easily just share their screen. Additionally, if anyone has any questions during the meeting, they can just raise their hand and wait to be addressed. Now, if you click on these three dots here, you can also change the layout of your meeting. If you want it to be auto, so auto layout means that whoever is speaking is going to come to the forefront and other people are going to be put aside. Or if you want a tiled layout, if you want a spotlight layout or a sidebar. Personally, I like the auto layout because it just switches between, you know, who is speaking and who isn't. And I think it's fine. But if you want to take a look at everyone in the meeting, you can go with tiled layouts. And I want a 16 person tiled. So 16 people could simultaneously be shown on my screen. And then if there are more than 16 people in your meeting, it is going to be shown on a secondary page. Now, once you do that, you can see in your settings, you also have the ability to go full screen. You can also open picture in picture mode. So you're able to browse around the internet or you're able to uh, work on other projects as your meeting is happening. You can also apply visual effects. So if you want to, you know, add backgrounds, filters, alter your appearance, you can also do that as well. You have quite a few different types of backgrounds. You have fantasy, nature, home, professional backgrounds. Then you also have filters like funny filters, accessories, and you also have video lighting, framing, and different styles that you can alter. Now, once we've gone through all of this, you can also see we have a couple of different troubleshooting options. And then we have our general settings for the meeting as we set before. 
Then on the right, you're going to have your meeting details, then your people who are added to this meeting, and you can manually add anyone. So if I want, I can just directly select a person, send an email, and this person would be invited. Then on the right, we have in-call messages so people can text as they are, you know, in the meeting. Then on the right, we also have activities. So you can actually set up things such as breakout rooms, live streaming, polls, and recordings. This gives you a really great idea of what is the consensus on a new topic or whether or not you should launch a new product. Then you have your host controls. So in your host controls, you can turn on host management. So this allows you to restrict or allow certain participation rules within your meetings. You can enable or disable the screen sharing of the participators, whether or not they can send chat messages, send reaction, turn on their microphone, turn on their video. And you can also choose to customize meeting access. So if the host must join before everyone else, which means that the meeting wouldn't be started until the host joins, then you can choose your meeting access type. If no one has to ask to join and anyone can directly dial in or only people who are trusted can join if they are invited using their Google account or everyone else needs to have to log in and be enabled to let in by the host. Now below that we can also enable or disable the contributors add-on activities such as creating polls. And just like that I can turn off my meeting. I'm just going to leave the call or end the call for everyone. These are the two options that are going to show up in a dialog box whenever a host is leaving or entering a meeting. I'm going to end the call for everyone. And just like that we have our meeting. Now if I return to my home screen like so and get started with a call, it's going to function a bit differently. So in a call, I am going to type in a phone number or email. I'm just gonna type in a email like so.com and we're going to copy or we can email this invite like this. And once we email the invite, you guys can see if I close this up, the call will be sent and when the other person receives it, they can go ahead and join in. However, a group link is going to behave more so like a meeting because a call is going to be between two people, whereas whenever you're doing a group call, you're going to have to allow your camera permissions and it's going to just open up your camera and it's going to wait for the friends to join. Now, within a call on the top right, you will have send wide video. Then you also can see the group members. You can enter your full screen mode and you can see different settings. In the call mode, you don't have settings like permissions, host permissions. Instead, it functions pretty much like any other call, any other FaceTime call that you would be doing. And you can just copy this link and send it to your friends so they can join you on your Google call. I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with Google Meet. Additionally, if you want to make your scheduling a whole lot easier, just click on your top right and open up your calendar. Whenever I have to schedule a meeting on Google Meet or any type of meeting that I'm going to be doing virtually, open up your calendar. Let's say I have a meeting and I'm just going to go into the 22nd. Let's say I have a meeting from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. I'm just going to drag my cursor like so. And then I can add the title of the meeting and add the Google conferencing details. And then just like that, I will have my Google conferencing ready and the people that are invited can join at the same time. So this makes it really easy for you to have pre-scheduled meetings and you're able to stay on track of all of your work. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.